So she's just blew uh, his air, her air into me. And this is what I see in me. I was, as she, I would say, as she blows the air into me, and I say to myself, I was that air. I see this air going through my throat. When it comes to my throat, it looks like there's um, a blockage. I'm trying to go through this, uh, like a weed that is hanging down, trying to block all the, the air going through. I see myself, I'm this person going through it and making the way for the air to go to some place. Well, this air came to, I believe, to my heart. That's when I, I woke up. I saw myself, I see the, my, my inner body here, from my throat here, until to my heart. That's when I, I woke up. That's when all the, the, the ambulance came and there's five ambulances that came and they all uh, do that. And they told me I was, I was, I was dead. And, uh, and they revived me back. Well, when they came, I was, I was breathing because my wife has breathed uh, air in me and I, and I came to conscious. So uh, and they took me to the hospital. And uh, last year, last year I had a, a massive heart attack. And uh, in, a, in a month of, uh, this month, yeah. 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 This month, I had a, a massive heart attack. And, um, but the good thing is, it's happened in a hospital. I was, I was at work at that day. I was working and, uh, and something happened upon me and I, and I felt dizzy and all that and I said to my boss, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not well. And he said, uh, what's wrong? I said, uh, I can't see two person. And he said, uh, that's no good. So he took me into the first aid room at school at the Seven Days Adventist uh, College down here in Doonside. I'm a bus driver for the, for the Mountain View uh, College. So uh, he took me in the, the first aid room and rest me there and he rang the ambulance to come and the ambulance didn't get there about an hour. So we were waiting for an hour for the ambulance to come. Because why it takes an hour? Because he told the ambulance that I'm, I'm breathing, I'm okay and I'm not in a serious uh, condition. So they, they didn't rush to come and, and look after me. But as we were sitting there, I said to my boss, I want to go home, I, I feel good, I'm going home. He said, no, 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 you're not going home, you stay here until the ambulance comes. So fair enough, we wait here, yeah, like what I said, an hour. The ambulance came, and uh, the two uh, nurses took care of me, and everything went all right, but he, they said, but your heart is not giving us a good reading. Your heart is not giving us a good reading. There's something wrong here. And I said, but I'm okay. I can go. And we said, no, 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 we're going out to the hospital. So they took me out to the hospital. And then um, I waited 20 minutes on the bed. Finally, they moved me in into this uh, uh, vacant room. And I was, and they were putting all this uh, thing on me. And right there and then, I was gone again. This time for five minutes. I was dead for five minutes. So, um, but praise be to God, there's a doctor there, he's a Christian doctor, he's a, um, a, a doctor for the hearts. But I, when I woke up, this doctor told me, you know, when somebody enters into their situations, they can't bring it back. There are four stages where a heart attack could happen to a person. But I went into the, the fourth stage and beyond the, the fourth stage of, of that stage of what they call it. And I entered that, but they brought me back. They don't know how did I came back and <coughs> what happened. <coughs> They've done everything they can to do it with my heart. Finally, I came back. 
And then he, when I woke up, and then he said to me, um, uh, when he, when I was settled down, and then he said to me, um, you know, I was I was called to come for another person, to come and take care of another person, of a hard person. But when he came into the, the hospital, they they called him to come and uh, took care of me, take care of me. So that's when he came in. That's that's how he he came in and he said. You know what? There's somebody who's looking after you. Mm. And I said to him, yes, I know. It's my God in heaven. He's looking after me. So, uh, it's not in there, so they moved me. They said, uh, I want to check your heart. I want to, to take you at the back and uh, put a, a camera in you and see what's wrong with your heart. Why it's playing up. So, fair enough, they took me in, into the back room. And they, um, they put a, a tube into my groin, into to my heart, and they found it out that my heart is blocked. Four arteries was blocked. And uh, I can hear the conversation going on. Oh, there's going to be an emergency uh, operation. They're going to shift me to, uh, to Westmead for the operation that night. And it's going through, the, through my mind. They're going to operate my heart. They're going to operate my heart. What happened if something went wrong? <laughs> you know, all this moment you can you can felt your your body speaking, your your mind is speaking, and and all all that that is in your body, all your body is, is speaking about. They're gonna do something to my heart. They're gonna do something to my heart. I was a bit worried. I was a bit uh, fear fear came. But not as strong, not as strong as that will destroy me. And I said, okay, you're going to operate my heart. Okay, Lord, I was, Lord, Lord, help me, help me, help me. So anyway, they made the decision, they're going to take me to Westmead and uh, operate my heart. So they took, they took me to Westmead. They said they're going to do it straight away. But when I went to, the, to Westmead, the doctor said, Went through me, uh, check me, check me out, look at me, and all this, and they said, "Now you, you, you're all right. I think we think we're gonna wait for another week for you to uh, to be strong, so your body, your mind, your heart can be strong to go through the operations." And uh, they were talking all this, and uh, and I stayed on, um, in the hospital for one week. But the thing is. Because they, I had a, a tube in my groin, into my heart. They said to me, you can't move. you got to stay still. If you move or bend, you might kick or break the, the tube in me. That will cause a lot of problems. Which is, I don't want to do that. And I, and I lay on my bed. I lay on that bed. And that bed is not very comfortable. And um, it's very painful. But I lay on that bed. While I was laying on that bed, I can feel my body is it's not helping me. My body is not helping me. But I'm trying to speak my mind. I'm trying to, to get to my mind. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. But my body is not giving in. So the mind and the body are, 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 are fighting. When I, when I went into the situation, I, I, I see how the mind and the body, when they don't work together, they, they will become and they will destroy you in some way. But I was, I was telling, I was saying to my body, you calm down, body. I was speaking to my body, body, you calm down, you calm down, you calm down. Because my body is not accepting a line on this wood for one week. And I, and I said to the Lord, Lord, please speak to me, speak to me. To, to get my mind out of my body, speak to me, let me speak something that we can have a conversation. So... We had a conversation, I had a conversation with the Lord. So this is the question he asked me. He asked me this question. How many souls that Jesus Christ bring into the kingdom? Do you, do you get the question? Do you understand the question? How many souls did Jesus Christ win, won, or bring into the kingdom? None. I said, Lord, I don't know. 
No, but we, we, we have, this is the conversation we'll be going through to get me out of from, uh, from my body. This is, he, he, he asked me a, a tough question. And it, it came to my mind, there's none. Because I've been reading the Bible, there's none. Because he reminded me about the Old Testament. Every, every sin that had to be a, a shedding of the blood. Without the blood, without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. So he was teaching me all these things while I was on when I was on in on this uh, uh, discomfortable bed as I was lying. So that that is that is my that is my my revelation when I when I was in the hospital with this heart attack that the devil has uh, taken me through. So um, that's a, that's a, a powerful question. I've been asking that questions a, a lot of time. I, I challenge a lot of uh, not challenge. I mean, give them uh, uh, insight. Uh, how many? It's not that we are trying to diminish Jesus Christ, but how we can see how important the blood of Jesus Christ, even Himself, when He when He gave His body to be crucified on the cross. How important it is for our body. So, without without the blood of Jesus Christ, without Jesus Christ, there's no healing, there's no no salvation. But Jesus Christ has to to die first. And I asked that question in in the church to the youth. One young fellow says, "Yes, there is." I said, "Yeah, you can tell me how." And see, and he said. What about the, the man on the, on the cross? And Jesus said, This day you'll be with me in paradise. And I said to him, Read the Bible. But the Bible says, At the ninth hour, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there's darkness. What about the other hour? So you think about, There's 24 hours in a day. And the Bible talks about the sixth, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. I would say from six o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock in the morning. Jesus gave up his, his, uh, his spirit and gave it to the Father. That's when he answered, this is mine. You can do your own research. Look, this is a question I'll, I'll ask you all. How many has Jesus brought any souls into the kingdom of God? without him dying first, without him shedding his blood first. So that's, that's our conversation, me and the Lord, as we, it was a beautiful conversation. And then we come, and then we come to the, the week that we, um, that we, that I had to go to under the knife. No, we, me and my wife, we were praying, I was, I was believing, God, I don't want to go through the knife, I don't want to go through the knife, don't let me go through the knife, don't let me go through the knife. We were praying and believing God, that I would not go through the knife. But by the grace of God, He allowed me to go through it. He allowed me to go through it for, for a reason. For something that I would learn. For something that I would see. In Well, the night before the, the operation, the morning before the operation, I got, they got to prepare me at 5 o'clock in the morning because I'm the first uh, patient to be uh, operated on that day. So, uh, my wife asked permission to the nurse, can, I, can she come early? Can she come early in the, to, uh, to see me go in? And the nurse says, yes, you can come. And she came. Of course she came. And, um, but during that time, as they were preparing me, they, she was crying. She was crying all about the day she arrived, I mean the time she arrived until the time that I, they wheeled me in into the, for the operation room. She was crying, 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 and I said to her, darling, you're not helping me. Crying is not helping me. No, we've been talking, we've been talking about the Word of God all week. Got to be strong, got to be strong. Now, you're crying. And I said to her, why are you crying? And she said, something might happen. Well, if it's happened, it's the Word of God. If, I, if my time is up to go, I'm glad to go home. 
But if my time is not ready, time yet to go, you, you bring me back. You bring me back. Just be strong. Just be strong. And, um, and, and, and she said to me, stay here. I'll, I'll go outside and, and I'll come back. I'll go and uh, strengthen myself and pray, have time of prayer with the Lord. And of course she went and then and the Lord strengthened her and, and the Lord speak to her. I will bring him back. I will bring him back. Let him go. So she came back and smiling and and then laughing at me and he said, because we have the right to say at that moment, no, I'm not going in. And then she said to me, darling, you go in. God's going to bring you back. So we had a, we, we cried together. We, 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 we laughed together and we had a, a moment of prayer. And then uh, they wheeled me in and they done the operation with me. And I'm, I'm, I'm here to, 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 to share the, the love of God and, and, and the power of God that is upon all those who are going through hardship of um, whatever problems that we are in. You know, the, the blood of Jesus is still warm. The blood of Jesus is still warm. The day that blood came out from his body is still warm right now. It's still warm right now. He can wash us. He can warm us up. And he will heal us. Because the Bible says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So everything of Jesus Christ is pure and holy. There's, 